Hello everyone, this is Winter here with Sonic Academy and welcome back to another tech tip. For this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion on interesting ways to use audio samples and we're going to be showing how to give your drums a nice lo-fi feel by reducing the sample rate of your audio material in Ableton Live. This technique gives your drums a nice underwater sort of feel and also removes any unwanted high frequency content in a way that kind of glitches up the top end of your audio and also kind of messes around with the overall character of the whole sound. So to show what this sounds like, I have the first loop. It's just an acoustic drum loop, and I went ahead and boosted up the high frequencies a little bit down here with EQ8. And that's just to help this effect shine through a little bit more. And then in the second half of this loop, this is the portion of the drums that has been reduced to half its original sample rate, which results in a really interesting sound. And that just sounds like this. This can be a really great way to carve out space in your drum loops for vocal samples or any sort of top end material that you have in your project. And it also introduces some interesting artifacts into the frequency spectrum, which I'll show you with a spectrum analyzer a little bit later. So I definitely don't take credit for this tip. This is actually a technique that Oliver Forty, Drake's producer, used a lot on his Views album. And I saw this in an interview and figured it'd be an interesting tip to share with you guys because it's fit in with the rest of these tech tips talking about interesting ways of approaching audio material. So the sample rate has to do with the amount of information that can be stored in your overall content. And it can also be a little bit complicated because it deals with the relationship between time and frequency waves, but really all you need to know to do this tip is the audible effect of this effect, which is whenever you lower the sample rate of your audio material, it cuts out the high frequencies while also limiting the amount of audio information that can be stored in the sample. So to do this is actually quite simple. So we'll just take this original drum loop here and we can remove our lo-fi drums. Go ahead and loop that real quick. Then we can go up to live and we'll actually be exporting this sample out and bouncing it down to a new version. So go up to the live menu here. Uh, actually just go over to file and then hit export audio video. And then this will be by default set to a sample rate of 44.1. Um, it may also be set to something like 44.8. And then what we're going to do for the sample rate is turn it down to half, so 22,050 instead of 4,400. And for now, we can also keep our bit depth to 24, so it doesn't change anything there. So all we're doing is just cutting that in half. And then you can hit export. And then you could save that to a location on your hard drive. Um, for now, we can just name this Lo-Fi Drums Demo, for example. And I'll just put this on my desktop. And then we can go ahead and open that up in the finder and just drag and drop it in. That'll be this lo-fi drums demo waveform right here. So we'll just drag and drop that back in the live sequencer. And now whenever we listen back to our audio material, you'll hear that it has that nice new lo-fi feel to it. And this can actually be interesting as well whenever we look at it through our Spectrum Analyzer in Ableton Live. So let me go ahead and just open that up. I went ahead and put the Spectrum on the master channel. Um, and pay attention to the upper high frequencies we have at the very beginning of our sample in this first half. And then pay attention to what happens to those frequencies whenever it changes over to the second sample. So you'll notice that in the spectrum analyzer, it gives us a similar effect to a high pass filter, but pay special attention to this area right around here whenever it plays this other sample, and you'll see that there's this new dip, this new artifact that's been created in the audio.
So what you can see there is it's not only cutting out high frequencies, but also introducing additional artifacts into our audio signal, which gives us that really interesting underwater sound. This also works on any sound as well, not just drum loops. So you can really include this technique with any of the patches that we've covered so far, and especially the patches that have more high frequency content, like some of the vocal resamples or textured bass lines. Additionally, if you also want to go for more of an old school sampler type sound, this is a great way to get a bit more flavor out of your one shots on your drums. Those old school samplers you had in the early 80s and early 90s had various different levels of audio quality playback that they could use. So by reducing that bit rate and adding in interesting artifacts, it enables you to use your audio samples in almost a low bandwidth mode. So overall, this enables you to get a little bit more sonic interest out of your sounds, but without taking up a lot of extra space in the mix. And in fact, it still provides you with enough space on the top end to fit other elements in there, like vocals or other leads or top line melodies. So I hope you enjoyed this tip and play around with this one and definitely go crazy with it in your tracks and you can create some really interesting stuff. Thanks, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.